Mit Star ist dann go. Bach Großli, ich die Jala muss go gehen. Hock das, die Bani Mahaya. Mit Star ist dann go. And then the white man taught us to speak in his tongue. And we learned it very well. First it was the Spaniards who called our land Florida. They built their missions all along the coastline. Then the English came and drove off the Spanish and told us that what they taught us was not right, that we should learn from them. So we learned their ways too. In my grandfather's times, when the first white men came to our lands, they were very small and weak, cramped up from riding upon their boats. They wanted a piece of land to stretch out upon. So we let them sit by our fire on our deer skins. And as they warmed themselves up and ate of our corn, they began to grow very large. So large that they became bigger than the Indian. And here we are now, helping the English fight their wars. Our tribes were stuck in the middle of all these fights and wars. We are Muscogean, the people of the swamps. The English called us the Creeks because we lived by the rivers and by the creeks. The tribe which lived here before the fort was built is known as the Guale. The Guale people met the Spaniards as they built their missions here. And within about a hundred years, the Guale people are gone. Sickness and disease, wars and slavery had taken its toll. As the Spanish were pushed out, the leftovers of the Guale that did not die went with them into Florida. They became what we call Ishtishimanole, or the Seminoles, runaways. Other tribes as well, like the Yamases, and many other tribes of the Creeks, ran away into Florida. As you see the way I'm dressed today, you can see I have been doing a lot of trading with the English and the Spanish. We have many things we have acquired from them. But in the ancient times, this is not how it was. In the old times, everything we had was made from nature. As you look over here, the tools laid out on the red blankets are the kinds of things that we used when first Europeans arrived. All those tools are rocks and shells and bones. Learning to chip rocks, to strike those rocks, to break those rocks. It's an old method that people did all over the world, striking and breaking rocks. Learning to hit that rock, at a certain angle to break pieces and using a deer's antler on the edge. This is how we would make our arrowheads. The knife that my son showed you is a knife made of flint rock. Not around this area a whole lot, but further inland, plenty of it. They would travel inland and trade with other tribes, things that they didn't have. The arrowhead that he's going to show you there is very old. It was found by a little girl in her backyard thousands of years. It was made by somebody probably used to put food on the table. A record of those people from long ago. It might be added to handles made of deer's antlers. What ties them together is tendons that come from the animals, sinew. We used every part of the animal. The tendon will be used for string, for tying our arrows and spears. The animal's fat, we used to make a candle with so we can see at night. The hair of the deer, I have scraped off, <coughs> made it into a headdress. The deer's toenails and hoof, we would boil them and melt them and make glue. They were also used for noisemakers as when dancing before the Spaniards brought us bells. We melted fish skins down into glue. We made tree sap into glue. The deer's leg bone made into a knife. Every bit of that deer is going to get used. The broken pieces of bone will make into needles for sewing, needles for the hair, tattoo needles and piercing needles. My fishing equipment over there. We would lay these uh, hooks there are carved out of bone, wood, and shell. The fish trap is made out of vines and branches of the trees. That would get set in the water, and then they would take rock walls and build the rock walls, which guided the fish right into the trap. Here's another knife made of bone. It's made out of the bone of an alligator, the leg bone. 
Alligator is very good. His meat tastes like alligator. <laughs> his tail has been made into a quiver. Gold arrows. His foot arrows. made into a pocket or a back scratcher. I like to keep things in there. Keys to the horse fit right in there. <laughs> the alligator's teeth I'm wearing around the neck from a big alligator. But the best part is the juice. Gatorade is really good. <laughs> Shells. Many of the foods which people eat today are foods that were introduced to the English and the Spaniards by the native tribes. Corn, beans, squash, potatoes, pumpkins, sunflowers, strawberries, blueberries. We would bring food to these forts and help them. After all, did the English know how to go in the woods without getting lost? No. We showed them the ways. We brought them corn and beans. We brought them fresh meat. Without us holding their hands, they would not have been successful. What I have here is a farming tool used for tilling the soil, for planting our crops. We would hang up our corn in the sun. We would let it dry. By drying the corn, it would keep it from rotting. There was no refrigeration, so food had to be smoked or dried in the sun. <laughs> Once the food was dry, we would store it away in a gourd, up in a storage house in our village. The storage house was up on stilts with a floor that was open. Smoky fires would be built underneath the house. The smoke would go up in there, keeping the bugs and the mice from wanting to live there, keeping the food fresh. We also use shells to make jewelry. That shells that he has there are carved out of whelk shells. These go back to the ancient times. We made our beads, our wampum beads. The belt that you see hanging right there in front of the post there is a copy of the one that was carried by Chief Tomochichi when he went to England with General Oglethorpe to meet the king. He carried his wampum belt as a sign of friendship to the English. This event here this weekend is before the time of Oglethorpe and Georgia. This is the time we call this the debatable lands. When the Spanish were still fighting for control, the English had built their <laughs> fort here and there was great war going on. The drill that I'm showing you here is used to drill holes in the bones of animals and shells. This is called a pump drill. On the very end, I have chipped out a stone to be very sharp. This one's actually made to be replaced with different bit drill bits, drill different sized holes. Pump drill. Another drill is known as the bow drill, used for fire making. The bow drill is a rib bone of the animal with a loose string that wraps around a stick to work back and forth and spin the stick. Shells were made in all kinds of things. Here's a shell used for signaling. One way of blowing the shell might mean enemies. Another way of blowing the shell can mean we're having a feast or ceremony. Nowadays you have cell phones, don't you? <laughs> the Gwali had shell phones and they worked good. <laughs> Probably one of the most common type of knives you would have found was a knife carved out of wood, river cane. We would take the river cane and use it to make all kinds of stuff. Fencing for around our garden. We would split the river cane and we would weave it into baskets. We would take that river cane and weave large mats that we could roll up and carry with us, use them for sitting on, curtains for houses, doors. We would take river cane, weave it together for walls of a house, then take mud and plaster over top. It dries hard. That is the type of houses or walls that we would build. That's called waddle and daub. The roofs of our house along the coast here would be made with the leaves of a palm. But if you were to go further inland where there are no palms, there they would use bark from the trees, like the poplar tree or the cedar trees. Tribes of the eastern woodlands, east of the Mississippi River, from Florida to Maine, did not move around. We did not live in teepees. 
Matter of fact, in Georgia, the tribe probably didn't even know what a teepee was. That's out west on the prairie. In our way to say house in the Creek language, Chico. You say that? Chico. Chico. A house. A house. Very permanent, because tribes in the east were farmers and fishermen. They didn't move around a lot. Out west, the teepee was a movable home, following the buffalo herds across the land. Our Chico was very comfortable. Some were left open at the bottom to allow the fresh breeze. Some of them in enclosed walls for winter with smoke hole at the top. Fireplace, raised beds up off the ground, buffalo skins to sleep on. Imagine that being your bed at night, that buffalo skin. Oh, that would be good. That's what we call a chief size bed. We didn't have a king. <laughs> a river cane knife could be used for skinning a deer. Probably one of the most simple, common knives you would have found. Axes. Using stone axes, chipping those rocks. But this is not done to chop wood. If I have a long log, and I want to make the log into two logs, instead of chopping it in half, burn it in half. Saves me the work of chopping, saves my tools, cooks my food, gets me warm. The fire did the work for us. That's how we would build a canoe. The canoe that I'm showing you here is just a toy. The real canoe might be 30 feet long. By burning the center and scraping, burning, scraping, once we burn it with the axes used to chop away and scrape away the burnt wood, we get to the hardwood, we stop scraping, we burn again. Again, we let the fire do the work. Some of these canoes were for shallow water. We would stand up in the back of the canoe use a pole. In deep water, we'd sit down and use a paddle. Sometimes we took canoes into the ocean. When Christopher Columbus came and called our people Indians, he landed in the islands in the Caribbean. There was tribes living there that he met, the Tainos, the Arawaks. These tribes had been there for a long time. Traveling into the ocean was not uncommon. Setting sails, using woven mats or animal skins to catch wind, Sandboxes built on the canoe, not for playing in, but so they could build a fire in their canoe. Cook a meal right there. Don't be so jumpy. When the battle takes place, you'll be no of use to us. We also use that river cane to make flutes. The flute that I have here is made out of cane. It's a double flute. like the English. Imagine us in our village 200 years ago. A hunter comes home with a big deer. We stand up and go. He's going to think he's in the English camp. Our way was to hoop and holler, war yell, or lulu. Let me hear it. Show them how it's done, guys. There you go. My war yells disappeared today. That's how we would show honor. We'd also use these yells to scare the enemy. But we don't use our hand to smack ourselves in the face. That's the TV tribe that does it that way. You know, the tribe that walks up to each other and asks each other the same question always. How? How? Let's teach you how to say hello. In the tribes we call the Creeks, my, my tribes, saying hello. Hinch J. Istongo. Hinch J. Istongo. How many of you ever heard of the Seminoles? The Seminoles were the runaways of the Creeks. Even though they're from our tribe, there's many dialects in the language. Saying alone, the Seminole. Chiantamo. Chiantamo. You ever heard of the Cherokees? They live further north in Georgia, up in the mountains. Saying alone, Cherokee. Osio. Each tribe speaks a different language. Just like I said, we lived in different types of homes. We wore different clothes. What I'm wearing is the way we dressed 200 years ago. What I'm wearing, we don't call this a costume. The costume is what I wore last week. 
for Halloween. <laughs> you know what I was? A cowboy. <laughs> Pottery. Some of the oldest pottery found in North America is found here in Georgia, along the Savannah River. Taking the clay and shaping it and drying it, baking it in the fire to make a cooking pot. It chips and breaks very easy. This is just a small cooking pot. Some of our cook pots were very large. We made some of the old pottery. I'd like to show you one of our games, and then we'll show you some weapons. The first game I'm going to show you here is a game used to settle war between tribes. We called this game stick ball. We called it ball game. We also called it little brother of war. When two tribes had an argument with each other, a lot of times they played a stick ball game to settle that argument. Not always, but sometimes. The object with your team, about 30 players on the team, to catch that ball made a deer skin and run it downfield, throw it up against the pole to get a point. The pole would be in the center of the field. In some areas, tribes play with the pole at each end of the field. The object was to hit that pole with that ball. The only rule really was you couldn't use the hands. You can run with the ball, throw the ball, hit the ball, kick the ball, even knock somebody down with a stick. But they've got sticks too and they could pop you right back. It was a rough game. People got hurt. But instead of fighting a battle in a war, many people dying in a war, which we did sometimes, we used stick ball as a way to settle that argument very peacefully. It was used by the tribes in the south by using two sticks, the Cherokees, the Choctaws, the Chickasaw, the Creeks, the Seminoles, two sticks. If you went up north into New York and Pennsylvania, tribes like the Mohawks and the Senecas and the Oneidas, what we call today the Iroquois, used one stick, a much larger stick than this. <coughs> when the French people came up there and started trading furs, the French noticed the stick had a crossed webbing, and so they called this game yeah. lacrosse. But it's an old native game used to settle arguments. <laughs> stick ball. Another game that we played was called Chunky Stone. This is a chunky stone. This would get rolled down a court. At the other end of the field, the boys would be lined up with their arrows and their spears, trying to hit that to knock it over to get a point. But it was more than a fun game for a point. It was a game that taught those boys hand and eye coordination. If you can hit a rock rolling on the ground, that means you can hit a rabbit running out of the garden. We got a rabbit right there. Anybody hungry? <laughs> Anyways, it taught those kids how to use those weapons. So by the time they were old enough to go hunting with their dads, they didn't have to be taught how to use a bow and arrow or a spear. They already knew. Speaking of weapons, the first weapons that was used by people were sticks. Some sticks were sharp. Some sticks were blunt for striking blows but sticks is what we had. Then people learned how to chip rocks, break rocks. And they made those rocks sharp and they added those to their sticks. The first spear was not for throwing or shooting. It was for running up and doing what? Stabbing. 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 One day man learned how to do what? You know how he learned, don't you? He came home late one night and his wife threw a rock at him. <laughs> Ever since then we've been throwing spears. Now what I have here is a lightweight spear for flying. It's got river cane for the shaft, turkey feathers to make it fly straight. The arrowheads are made for coming off. When that arrowhead hits the animal, that sticks. We're talking big animals, ice elephant, woolly mammoth. Hits, sticks, this falls on the ground. The wounded animal takes off with this stuck in him. One spear doesn't kill him. He's taken off, we're gonna follow. As the hunters start to follow, they look for the tracks, the blood trail. They find their arrow. Inside of their pouch, they'd have a whole bunch of arrowheads. So instead of carrying a whole bunch of long arrows, they only needed one and a whole bunch of points. Now if I throw this with my hand, it's not gonna go very far. So to make it go far, we're gonna use a throwing stick called an atlatl. 
all over the world people use this. A stick that makes the arm longer, takes the power from here, puts the power where? On the back. So now when I throw, this will act as an extension of the arm, sending that arrow a long ways. Would you like to see it? Yes. Yeah. Need you guys to move over just a little bit. <laughs> First one I'm going to throw with just my hand, and I'm going to throw it as hard as I can. Watch. Not very far, huh? Yeah. But by using this addle addle, I can put this arrow over there to the next trail. Watch. Oh! Yeah. Whoa! Hold up. Hold up. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other side. Good God. There comes Chris. Let's show you some accuracy. See that guy running over there? <laughs> I think I got smallpox from him the other night. <laughs> a little feel a little under the weather today. See that tree out there? See if we can pop that tree. Okay. Yeah, that was off. Let's try one more. Yeah, a little better. That's how the atlatl works. Wow. This weapon, device, atlatls, all over the world. Next invention was another stick. <coughs> the bow. With the bow, you could shoot an arrow a lot farther than you can throw it. The arrow got smaller. By the way, how do you like my quiver? Mm -hmm. <coughs> a little gift for all the bulldogs here. A gator's tail stuffed with Seminole's arrows. I know. Well, I said it. <laughs> the arrow got smaller. And as the arrow got smaller, instead of the arrowhead made to come off, it was uh, tied in permanently. Now that the arrow is smaller, you could carry many arrows in one spot in a quiver. With this bow, we could shoot an arrow twice of what you just saw me throw with an atlatl, but not accurately. To get that accurate shot, the hunter would dress up like a deer wearing the deer skin on his back, the face of the deer, made into a mask. This allowed that hunter to sneak in close and get a good shot with his bow. Because when the deer saw him dressed like that, they were fooled thinking that was a deer. The bigger animals have been overhunted. The woolly mammoth was gone. Now we're hunting small game, like squirrels, or uh, rabbits, squirrels, deer. Now for a small animal like a squirrel, we might use a blow gun. The blowgun that I have, somebody's getting a cellular smoke signal here. <laughs> Tell them to bring trade goods. <laughs> now I have uh, darts here made out of thistle wrapped around a branch of a tree. The blowgun itself is hollowed out a river cane, drilled out through the center, long skinny stick. On the end of the stick would be a sharp little arrowhead worked inside the blowgun. This is for squirrels, but I have not seen no squirrels today. I think maybe they saw the blow gun. So in that case, I'm going to get someone out of the audience, brave and strong, that looks like a squirrel. Someone who has real good insurance. And nobody related to a lawyer. Now who's going to help? How about a father or dad or husband? We got one, all right. Thank you very much. How are you today? What's your name? Yes. Jeff? What, uh, what is, well, why don't we give him an Indian name? You got one? Uh, we'll call him Targeet. Targeet. <laughs> target. <laughs> now, Target, what you're going to do is you're going to hold this skunk skin for us. We want you to hold it. Either you can do it like this, weak and limpy. Or you can do it like a real warrior and use your teeth. <laughs> no! We're no! just kidding. That came off the highway. You don't want to stick that one in your mouth. That's roadkill. You guys ready? Yeah. Here we go. Our next program.
will be Colonial Madison at the one o'clock down the court. And it will be you ready? Is this your family? <laughs> would y'all like to take the first shot? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> Whoops. That's how I get leaks in my camp. Here we go one more time. There you are. That's how the blow gun works. Let's hear it for Target. What's this clapping business? Come on. War hoops and Lulu's. <laughs> 500 years ago, we had visitors here. As I was telling you earlier, as the white man came to our land, we saw the things that they had. We liked the things that they had. So we started to trade. First, we traded our knowledge. The Indians knew which plants were poison, food, medicine, which trails to take, which rivers to go down, not get lost. Knowledge was important. Then when knowledge wasn't needed so much, we began to trade other resources, furs and skins. How many of you have ever called your money bucks? Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. What I have right here is a real buck. Yep, the skin of a boy deer. That was our money. We used that skin, we could leave the hair on, make a rub, or we could scrape the hair off. By using the brains of the deer rubbed into the skin, it made the softest leather you'll ever find. We're going to pass that around and let you feel it. Don't be afraid to touch it. The brain's not on there no more. <laughs> Those buck skins could buy us many things. We could buy a metal cooking pot. We could buy a metal knife. Instead of a stone knife that breaks easy, this one don't break. We like a steel tomahawk. We like a musket and a gun. Cloth, silk, wool, cotton. The trade goods that you see here were brought in trade. Beads and baubles. Ye old colonial Nike. <laughs> Muskets and guns replaced the old weapons. Here's something that was around the way I'm dressed. About 300 years ago, they had these. What do you think? Is it me? <laughs> so trading. We did a lot of trading. And as we traded, the old things would disappear. No one needed to make pottery anymore. Metal cooking pot doesn't break. And after the elders died off, the knowledge of pottery went with them. Same thing with breaking rocks and flint napping, chipping stones. No one needed to do it anymore, so the art would become lost. As the native people became dependent on Europeans, years later, the deer skins was not valuable anymore. We would overhunted the deer. There was hardly any deer left in Georgia. So we started going to other lands of other tribes and hunting their deer. Pretty soon, there was no deer left. So we started trading land away. A little bit of land here and a little bit of land there. And almost all of what today is Georgia had been traded away by the Creek Indians to pay off their debts to the traders. Now I want to show you one of my favorite pockets. This one's made out of tree bark. And inside is my favorite pocket. I got pockets made out of alligator feet, pockets made out of deer skin in which I keep my bird whistles in. We use different bird calls to hunt with. Here's one made out of the bone of a turkey's wing, made into a turkey call. The turkey you see hanging there. I've got a pouch that's made out of a turtle shell over here. There it is. Turtle shell pouch made into a pocket to carry things in. But my favorite pocket of all is this one. This one is made out of a frog skin. Let me see if I can get him out. There he is, a bullfrog, bullfrog. Now we eat the frog meat, how many's ever had frog legs? 
Come on, this is Georgia, isn't it? Frog legs are good, huh? Tastes like um, frogs. That chicken gets credit for everything. Next thing you know, they're going to be saying there's buffalo like chicken. <laughs> buffalo wings. But the frog legs, the guts of the frog we use for bait for catching fish and alligators. The skin of the frog, I turned it into a pocket. You know what I keep inside of it? More frog skins. This one here has a painting of the great white father on there. What's in your frog skins? To think that people live like everybody else. We keep the old ways alive, so they'll never be lost. I hope you've learned a little bit today about uh, our tribes. I uh, apologize for my voice and my feelings not so good today. Um, but uh, I hope you had fun here learning. Uh, we're going to have our camp opened up. Please do not touch. Some of the stuff will break. It's very sharp. Some of it belongs to the people here. So we welcome you to come in if you're hungry. That cooking pot right there has some food in there. Help yourself. So you may have a question. Dead soldier, a dead head. Well, I'll be doggone. That's where they put it. I wondered where that went. That should be the one in the Halloween part. You know that? You guys get hungry? Air skin. I care for all of them. Yeah, I put a lot of wood them. No. Ew, an alligator. Uh, don't look in that pot.
Oh, that's English, too. Oh. Hey, go take a look. You have to take a look at it. Oh, uh, it must be somebody's hat or something, probably. <laughs> <laughs> this looks much better. That was a pretty big rabbit. You should have seen this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.